people get richer and move to cities, our global appetite for meat and fish increases. And by 2050, there'll be an extra two billion of us to feed. But as wild fish stocks decline and pressure on natural systems from livestock farming increases, we need to find new ways of meeting this appetite. I'm Russell Beard in Milwaukee, USA, where a new breed of urban farmers are growing more than just vegetables. Will Allen is a former basketball pro turned pioneering city farmer. He runs Growing Power, a small but productive two-acre farm in the center of Milwaukee. You don't have a lot of land here at, no. at Growing Power, do you? No, it's not about how much land you have, it's what you do with the land that you have. Every square foot is important. Um, Growing Power's 115 staff grow food for the local community using some innovative techniques. This isn't what you might have expected okay. to find in a greenhouse. Now we have 10,000 uh, uh, fish 10, in a 10,000 gallon system wow. uh, here using a space that you wouldn't normally use. Will uses aquaponics, a circular system for growing fish and plants together in water. Waste from the fish is pumped into plant beds, where bacteria turn it into fertilizer for vegetables, which then clean the water for the fish. This means these units don't pollute waterways or need chemical fertilizers, and they use up to 90% less water than conventional farming. Uh, we're going to let you participate in this. Okay, okay thank you very right. much. Um, but that's my net. Okay. Don't be messing with my net. Come on. Oh my gosh, man, Come there's loads in here. here. These tilapia need to be separated by size and moved to different tanks. Right here, the bottom. Start right here with me. Right to the bottom. Right to the bottom. One, two, three, let's go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. Now we're what? Whoa. We're gonna put them out here and then we're gonna separate them. Okay, the big ones in there. And the smaller ones in these two. All right, here. That's oh, a big one. God. It's squiggling. Whoa. You're not done yet, man. All you're right. sweating a little bit, but you're not done yet. I think that's fish juice. The other fish raised here is the local favorite, yellow perch. Once plentiful in Lake Michigan, stocks have now been decimated, making this one of the only sustainable ways to get hold of it. Well, all right, just sit those over there. Now we're going to grab the other container, and we're going to go around this way. He's a taskmaster. All right, they're in their new home. How scalable do you think this do you think this project is? I mean, oh, this is very scalable anywhere in the world. Really? Very inexpensive infrastructure here. One pump One lifts the water up and that's that's it. Just recirculates the water. And you can run this, these pumps off of solar. The fish and vegetables in just seven square meters can provide the majority of food needed for two people. Work for us. It's good. Will Allen's aquaponics setup is part of a wider farming system which makes maximum use of space with minimum waste. Oh my goodness, it's thick. Well, they're uh, breaking down all this waste. We bring in about 80,000 pounds into our composting operation. Every year? No, every week. Every week? Yeah. Wow. Every year, Growing Power hosts hundreds of trainees. This is education that I can't get in the classroom, and that's why I'm here. You know, I'm here to learn and hopefully someday do something like this myself. That'd be great. So we're in a lot of ways, we're turning back the clock to the days when we had regional and local food systems where 85, sometimes 90% of the food grown in our states uh, were consumed. Now it's the other way around. Mm. As a matter of fact, many major cities, less than 1% of the food is locally grown. A few kilometers away, a team of entrepreneurs inspired by Will Allen have set up a commercial aquaponics farm. So we've come across town and this is Sweetwater Organics. This represents really the next chapter in urban farming here in Milwaukee. Come to meet Josh Fandorf. He's the co-founder. He's gonna tell us how they do it. Hi, Josh. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Very well. Uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. This is some place. This is absolutely massive. Founded in 2008, Sweetwater Organics raises around 50,000 tilapia and perch and produces tons of salad greens every year. You're seeing this idea of growing fish and 
and plants, plants and protein mm -hmm. indoors. You're seeing this idea taking root all over the world. I think so, I think absolutely. I mean, it's a way for you, when you realize it, the, the amount of food you can grow, you know, the amount of fish you can do. Sweetwater are constructing a larger outdoor aquaponics system to produce six times more food than they currently do with half as much energy. This whole area used to be an industrial wasteland. Yeah, it's a crazy place to be when you look around. You got apartment buildings here, and you got a structural engineering company here, and you got a, a yacht, you know, boat yard over there. And there's police sirens in police the background. Sirens. Yeah, I mean, it's just like sometimes it's easy to forget that we're actually still bang in the middle of the city. Fast growing salad greens and sprouts are Sweetwater's main earners, keeping the business afloat while the fish mature. Very healthy looking lettuce. It's the first multi story uh, farm I've ever been to. How are you yeah, doing? Doing well. Good Russell, to see you. Thanks for having us. As you can see, we're up here on the third level uh -huh. of our closed aquaponic system, mm -hmm. uh, harvesting some lettuce to get out to some customers. Whoa. So these are the roots that help. Uh, clean and oxygenate the water for the fish. Yeah. And we also take the nutrients from the fish waste. This is how the plants are able to absorb that. Most of Sweetwater's customers are restaurants and grocery shops within a 16 kilometer radius, which keeps food miles to a minimum. Okay, so we've harvested our salad greens. Now we're looking for Nick, who's gonna help us catch some fish and take it to one of the restaurants that they supply. I think this is Nick. Before Nick started here, he was an intern at Growing Power. Today we're going to pull out some, I believe, 12 tilapia, and we're going to send them off to a restaurant called Odd Duck. Uh, they're maybe a half mile down the street from us. So. Wow. Cool. Nothing to it. Kind of go to the corners and pull up. Whoa. Got a couple of them right here. Here goes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a very good history of fishing on this program, <laughs> man. I'll be honest with you. Right. <laughs> Ah, they're Please. quick. Are you sure? <laughs> this is getting embarrassing. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay, sorry, that was hard work. Sorry, little man. Two. And we're halfway there. We've got six. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, man, it is a beautiful fish, isn't it? I mean, these tilapia have to have some of the smallest food miles of any fish in the city. Absolutely, the only thing that's uh, less is growing it yourself. Wow, I love that. I mean, it just makes it so graphic, what you're talking about here. We're biking yeah. along a fish that is within half a mile of the restaurant rather than these Massive Arctic trucks. Exactly, bring they have to travel hundreds of miles, sometimes uh, thousands, man. Hi right, there. Yeah. yeah, good. How are you doing? Great. I think I've got a delivery for you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Is it important to you that these fish are so local that we were able to bike them over? That's amazing. Um, it's pretty rare that I can walk a block and get a whole load of fresh fish. Yeah. Serving my restaurant every night. It's, it's hard to believe that that was swimming about in, um, in a pool about half an hour ago, and here it is on the table. In fact, it's done very hard work. Before it got to this chopping board, that fish was growing lettuce. So you've got to remember that as well. It's a hard-working fish, lived a good life. Um, at the moment, this is still a premium product, but as aquaponics production is scaled up, prices will come down. Well, the last question is, how do they taste? Oh, they taste great. Yeah. Smells good. It smells really good. Quick fry. Mmm. Beautiful. 